Um, I'm a retired Chicago police officer. Woohoo! And the founder of the Drug Induced Homicide Foundation, a nationwide non profit organization supporting our judicial system and bereaved families seeking justice in the lethal poisonings of our loved ones. More importantly, I am the mother of Sydney Sherrigan. On May 31st, 2015, my husband and I suffered the indescribable pain of losing a daughter to drugs. Sydney was 18 years old, and like so many of the beautiful faces on these banners, she was poisoned. Sydney was the victim of a drug-induced homicide. Chicago police detectives immediately closed Sydney's case once her toxicology indicated MDMA toxic toxicity and classified it as non-criminal. I was repeatedly advised by detectives that Sydney made a choice. Sydney never made a choice to die. How can a person unlawfully deliver a lethal dose of MDMA to my teenage daughter and she die and no one goes to jail? My daughter paid with her life, but yet dealers walk away with zero accountability. I pleaded with the detectives to pursue the 1989 drug-induced homicide statute, which simply is defined as the unlawful delivery of a controlled substance resulting in a death. Sadly, rarely enforced in Illinois. As of this morning, 7,164 opioid-related deaths have been recorded in Chicago since 2014 and only three drug dealers have been convicted of drug-induced homicide. Fatal opioid poisonings exceeding homicides by firearms, suicides, fatal motor vehicle crashes in Illinois, but still very little spoken in regards to prosecuting the persons peddling poison for profit. After 16 months pleading with the detectives to question the drug dealers responsible for Sydney's homicide, educating myself as to the Illinois Drug-Induced Homicide Statute, and networking with all of you amazing people. And speaking out publicly, both of Sydney's dealers were charged with her homicide. In 2018, wait, it gets better. In 2018, drug dealers Brent Tyson and Cynthia Parker were convicted of my daughter's homicide and sentenced to the Illinois Department of Corrections. Next to burying my daughter, fighting for justice was the hardest thing I have ever had to do. I do not think that there is anything crueler of our judicial system than to task a grieving family with fighting for justice in the poisonings of our loved ones. It is not my intention to ever speak poorly of our judicial system, but rather to advocate towards a shift in thinking by law enforcement and prosecutors away from past protocols focusing on accidental to now classifying these cases as criminal and treating every suspected drug toxicity death as a homicide. Locking up a drug dealer will not bring back the precious lives lost to illicit drugs, but we are confident that it will save the lives of others. The McHenry County State's Attorney's Office has charged nearly 80 drug-induced homicide cases since 2017, compared to 12 in Kane County, 9 in Lake County, and 15 in Cook County. McHenry County State's Attorney Patrick Keneally further stating that the number of opioid-related deaths have dropped significantly since the prosecution of these drug dealers. This, we truly believe, is tangibly resulting in lives being saved. Pursuing these criminals sends a clear and unmistakable message to drug dealers that if you choose to profit from the misery and suffering of others, the judicial system will pursue you. And should the unthinkable tragedy of a fatal drug toxicity death occur because of your unlawful delivery, expect a knock on your door with an arrest warrant for drug-induced homicide. I am proud to share that our advocacy for justice has grown nationwide. The case that was initially closed and classified as non-criminal did result in a homicide conviction. In recent years, the foundation assisted in writing of policy within the Chicago Police Department indicating protocol to investigate every suspected drug toxicity death as a homicide. 
Members of our foundation have been invited to the Chicago Police Academy to train detectives on this new policy. Our foundation has made national news and most recently invited to participate in the first ever family summit on counterfeit and illicit drugs, an illicit drug epidemic hosted by the DEA. In closing, a few facts I'd like to share. The CDC estimates that drug poisonings have claimed 108,809 lives in 2021 alone, which represents an American life lost every five minutes. These are our family members, co-workers, neighbors, friends. Over the past two decades, nearly a million Americans have lost their lives to drug poisonings, devastating our families and communities and our nation as a whole. Beyond these fatal poisonings over the past two decades are millions of individuals experiencing non-fatal poisonings. Please carry Narcan, it will save a life. Over 9.5 million counterfeit pills were seized in just the U.S. in 2021. Fentanyl is now the leading cause of death for people 18 to 45 years old in the U.S. Counterfeit pills are illegally manufactured by criminal drug, drug networks and are made to look like prescription opioids such as Oxycontin, Percocet, Vicodin, Xanax, or stimulants like Adderall. Buying drugs on the street is like playing Russian roulette. From Xanax to cocaine, drugs or counterfeit pills purchased in non-medical settings may contain life-threatening amounts of fentanyl. A rise in unintentional use for people buying prescription opioids and other drugs lace adulterated with fentanyl. Unsuspecting buyers thinking that they are getting a pharmaceutical drug and they die. Lastly, it is the Mexican cartels that are working with the Chinese transnational criminals, bringing in mass amounts of fentanyl and making fake pills killing our children. My favorite quote, and this is dedicated to Kathy and Rob. I always wondered why somebody didn't do something about that. And I realized that I was somebody. Be the change. God bless.